Now I have to confess, when I saw the news break of this the other day, I thought, oh, this is just dirt sheet shit. It can't be true. It's just fans and nerds sitting there and trying to create some drama. Because wrestling is so damn boring now. They don't have much of anything else to talk about. And one of the few things that people could talk about that still gets everybody's rocks off, because wrestling doesn't get their rocks off enough, is to talk about backstage drama, talk about people being let go, people being fired, people being released, people quitting, asking for releases, and all of that. Like, that's basically what wrestling has devolved into. You're looking for the drama that wrestling itself does not provide you. Am I wrong? Some of you will say yes, but you know deep down that hashtag Schlake Daddy is right. But apparently, there is some smoke here that after the Royal Rumble debacle, that Shane McMahon has been quietly left go by WWE. And from all accounts, like, this seems somewhat legit. You've got multiple sites reporting this, multiple sources talking about all of the backstage heat he got um, for, with the Royal Rumble booking and how Shane McMahon tried to make it about himself more than that in a moment. And the fact that Vince was just fucking fed up and said, we can't have this. And instead of making a big brouhaha about it or anything, just quietly let him go. When you look at the WWE webpage, I don't remember if Shane McMahon was listed down there before as one of the members of the board. I would have thought he was. He certainly is not there now. You know, you haven't really seen any responses to the contrary. Like, apparently Vince fired his own son. Which probably surprises a lot of people. And maybe it shouldn't. Because this is the same Shane McMahon, if you remember a little over a decade ago, he left the WWE to go pursue greener pastures out there on his own in the business world before he ultimately came back a few years ago because he realized it wasn't that great out there under daddy's umbrella. You can always tell that Vince has been slightly more partial to Stephanie. And you can certainly see where he envisioned Stephanie in the Linda McMahon role at the very least in the future. And it hasn't been Shane. Shane's never been the chosen one. As soon as Stephanie came into the fold, it was always going to be Stephanie. And then it was going to be Hunter. And then it's not going to be Hunter. And it probably still isn't going to be Hunter. And he's like, well, I can't fire my daughter's fucking husband, but I could fire my son. <laughs> but you know what? The look for Shane McMahon is bad. It's really bad, especially if you believe the reports. And there certainly has to at least be smoke there, if not a fucking inferno. Because when you look at the way that Royal Rumble was laid out and it was mapped out, it just didn't make a lot of logical sense. Shane McMahon making an appearance in the Rumble is one thing. He's been gone a while. Part of the experience, the appeal of the Rumble is the surprise entrance. You don't know who's going to appear. There's always a couple of surprises. Here's Shane McMahon. He's one of the surprises. He's a legit star from the company's past. Like, this is a dude that's done some crazy, insane shit. He's a fucking McMahon. Like, there's all these reasons that you can make a good argument that he deserves one of the 30 spots in the Royal Rumble, merits one of the spots. Sorry, Cesaro, but at the end of the day, Shane McMahon has been a bigger needle mover for that company than you ever could imagine to be. Again, that's just reality. Especially for a company that lacks star power more than it ever, ever has. You gotta trot out whatever old acts you possibly can. But trotting him out at number 28 and making him a prominent part of the end of the story of the Rumble and having him advance to like the final damn four and having all of these guys having to sell his abortion ass punches. Like that's a crock of shit. When he's coming in and he's eliminating Kevin Owens, that's a fucking problem. If you were doing something and introducing Shane McMahon here to start his path to WrestleMania and have him be a heel and what he did was going to lead to a match with somebody, that's one thing. But you also didn't need to do that with him entering so late and making it to the goddamn Final Four. That's ridiculous. And what the fuck is wrong with Shane McMahon sitting there and trying to make the Royal Rumble about himself? It's not about you. It wasn't going to be about you. Like, unfortunately, it was going to be about Brock Lesnar. And why would you do anything to fuck that up? Like, it is amazing the ego on some of these people involved with wrestling sometimes and the way they view themselves. 
and the elevated view they have of their significance and their importance. Shane McMahon is relevant, yes. Shane McMahon can be an important player on the road to WrestleMania. Shane McMahon absolutely does not need to have to be in the Royal Rumble. It makes sense that he's in there. But he absolutely should not be one of the final four, just like a bad bunny shouldn't be, even though I'm very happy to fucking see him. Glad he was there. Wish he could be here again for WrestleMania, because that dude's freaking legit. And then you see the reports of him griping at Vince about um, creative and going back and forth. And apparently Shane McMahon was going to be in the title match at Elimination Chamber, but had a problem with that and had a problem with this creative. Look, I'll defend Shane on that because everybody's got a freaking problem with Vince's creative because it's a drizzling shit. The creative team gives them some good and a lot of bad ideas. Vince, Vince rips it all up any damn way so it doesn't make any damn difference. And then he basically books whatever the fuck he wants to. But to sit there and even solely place the blame on Shane for how the Royal Rumble went is dog shit. At the end of the day, that's on Vince. It's not on Adam Pierce or Chris Park or whoever the fuck else, Jamie Noble, were the producers for this match. Vince McMahon is the head motherfucker in charge of everything involving WWE, which is a big part of the problem with WWE and their corporate structure. And will be in the long term in some days when he's not in charge. How's this company going to do then? But he ultimately signed off on it. Vince has to sign off on everything. If frickin' Shane McMahon was getting heat backstage because of his push with the Royal Rumble shit, then Vince could have stepped in and said no and fired his ass then or told him to go home. Like it was such, it was okay until it wasn't. It was okay until he had a tremendous amount of heat. Like it makes you wonder if there's even more shit behind the scenes that we haven't really heard about. Because I'm sorry, like this Royal Rumble thing, that defeat me feels more like the tipping point or the last straw than it does alone in and of itself a reason to fire an executive of the damn company. And I even wonder if he actually has been fired. Was it just a thing where they hush us and be like, I'm going to suspend you for a little while. You need to go cool your heels for a little while. We'll bring you back later. I don't know. But the fact that a Shane McMahon could even think that he was more important or as important as a Brock Lesnar, that he was that important where the Royal Rumble needed to be crafted around his return, is a major fucking problem for this company. It is a major problem because they're letting one of the inmates run the asylum. It is a fucking problem that Shane McMahon, who's supposed to know better, who's grown up in the business, who understands, you would think, in theory, the business, should know what the hell this show should have been about, that he thinks it should be about him. And it's also a problem, the fact of, it's not even that egregious or criminal that it was or that he tried to because that Royal Rumble match was so lacking in star power and star talent. Like it's a problem across the board. Oh my God. It's amazing how some people just can't check their egos. And this happens a lot in the business world. And maybe now we have a better understanding of why Shane McMahon hasn't been viewed as the heir apparent to Vince, and it has been Stephanie. You might not like the things Stephanie's about, might like, not like the things that Stephanie does, and she's an egomaniac in and of herself, but she's not clearly to the same level, apparently, of Shane McMahon, who just comes across as an out-of-control, out-of-touch douchebag if you believe the reports. But you have to say, like at this point, where there's smoke, there has to be fire. It's easy sometimes to rip on the dirt sheets and just say that everything that they say is bullshit, and some of it is. But a lot of it's not. Kinda happen to believe this one, and it's fucking crazy that it's true. <laughs>